So when it comes to precedent, that is the situation. Yes, I see. Burning the midnight oil, are we? Such zeal. Ah, Hubert. What are you doing here at this hour? Up to your usual intrigues behind Edelgard's back? I would thank you not to make such blind and rude assumptions when you lack any basis for them. Well, uh, yes, I suppose I was making assumptions. You have my apologies. Not at all. I am, in truth, up to my usual intrigues. So your amends are quite unnecessary. Oh, all right then. Uh, hold a moment. You were? In any event, what are you reading with such vigorous intent? Listen to me, Hubert, I... A book of past judicial precedent, is it? Ah, and specifically concerning the prosecution of nobles. Yes, I have a mind to settle matters with my father. The letter of the law considers rebellion a capital crime, but practically speaking, that is not the case. Members of the nobility are especially likely to be granted clemency, and all the more so in recent years. Yes, they expiate their guilt by surrendering peerage, providing assets and information, and leaning on the strength of their past meritorious deeds. In short, the nobility make full use of every excuse available to hold tight to their miserable lives. One could pluck off their arms and legs and leave them to fester in the dankest of prisons and they would still come wriggling back to the surface. So long as they are permitted to live, that is. Like with the former Marquis Vestra? That one did not serve his emperor properly and acted in a manner easily construed as treasonous. This is incontrovertible fact. Go on. Sadly, he resisted arrest and lost his life in the unfortunate incident that ensued. His guilt, or innocence, on the matter of treason will remain forever shrouded in mystery. That sounds like a careful bit of sophistry to me. It appears to anyone with half a mind that you thought him guilty and had him executed. As a noble, he should have been judged in public, as is right and proper, no? So long as they are permitted to live, the noble creature struggles desperately to continue doing so. Such is ever their nature. Which is precisely why I am investigating precedent. In order to block any means by which my father could escape justice. I will not allow him to stage a comeback. I will see my father properly judged for his crimes. But could you, if matters came to that? I wonder. It is not a question of can or cannot. The man will be dealt with, and by my hand, I could never forgive myself otherwise. Not as the inheritor of the title of Duke Iyer, nor as the one to succeed him as Prime Minister. It is for Her Majesty to decide such things. However, if it proves to be in Her Majesty's interest, I suspect this resolve of yours will be most welcome. I suppose that will be enough for today. Splendid spear work. You are every bit the ideal of a nobleman. One who wields both lance and pen with equal aplomb. Hubert, as ever, you manage to materialize when one least expects it. If you insist on showing up in the middle of training, do not complain if you find yourself mistakenly skewered. Yes. Accidents do so often happen during such exercises. 
Why, you could stab the life out of me here and now and still readily explain it away as a mere accident. Enough, Hubert. Even if you are joking. Although, I suppose it was I who first spoke flippantly. You have my apologies. I am ever at a loss to reply when you insist on apologizing so earnestly. In any event, your training has a certain ghastly quality about it of late. I found myself curious what it was that so impelled you, and came to check on the situation. I should think it obvious. The climax of this war is upon us. Thus, I have to focus myself all the more and work vigorously toward ultimate victory. I do this for my comrades, for the Empire, and for a better future. And perhaps for your departed father? Why would you think that? The father I looked up to, the one who served as a pillar of the Empire, died long ago. The man we fought at Fort Mercius was nothing but a traitor who lost sight of how to live. At this point... Listen to me, Ferdinand. If you wish to deny my claim, just tell me I am mistaken. As they say, those who protest over much admit the truth unwittingly. That was not my intention. Yet, I cannot deny there is a part of my heart which thinks exactly that. You have changed. Well, no. Your true nature has not changed a bit. You are stubborn as ever, but there now also exists a rather flexible side to your personality. And you never change. And have not since the days when I was an ignorant young man. Since that time... You have proceeded unerringly along this road at Edelgard's right hand. But now all walk that same path. And it is the two of you who stand at the vanguard. If you have something to say, dispense with the flattery and speak plainly. Fine. I mean to join you both at the forefront. So our Emperor will have loyalty at both her right and left. We shall be Hubert and Ferdinand, the twin jewels of the Empire. The twin jewels of the Empire? <laughs> uh, was it truly so amusing? <laughs>